Welcome to the training video on Obstacle Limitation Surfaces as per IKO and XR14. The training video has been mentored by Lieutenant Commander Varun Ektar and Wing Commander Ajay Nadial and made by Squadron Leader Piyush Das. This is a runway strip or a flight strip. A runway and any associated stopways shall be included in a strip. Length of runway strips. A strip shall extend before the threshold and beyond the end of the runway or stopway for a distance of at least 60 meter, where the code number is 2, 3 or 4. 60 meter where the code number is 1 and the runway is an instrument 1 and 30 meter where the code number is 1 and the runway is a non-instrument 1. Width of runway strips. A strip including a precision approach runway shall, wherever practicable, extend laterally to a distance of at least 140 meter where the code number is 3 or 4. And 70 meter where the code number is 1 or 2. On each side of the center line of the runway and its extended center line throughout the length of the strip. Let's start with a training video on obstacle restriction and removal. The objectives of the specifications in this training video are to define the airspace around aerodromes. To be maintained free from obstacles so as to permit the intended airplane operations at the aerodromes to be conducted safely and to prevent the aerodromes from becoming unusable by the growth of obstacles around the aerodromes. This is achieved by establishing a series of obstacle limitation surfaces that define the limits to which objects may project into the airspace. Objects which penetrate the obstacle limitation surfaces contained in this chapter may in certain circumstances cause an increase in the obstacle clearance altitude height. For an instrument approach procedure or any associated visual circling procedure or have other operational impact on flight procedure design. Criteria for flight procedure design are contained in the Procedures for Air Navigation Services Aircraft Operations PANS OPS, Doc 8168. As a broad specification for the outer horizontal surface, a tall structure can be considered to be of possible significance if they are both higher than 30 meter above local ground level and higher than 150 meter above aerodrome elevation within a radius of 15,000 meters of the center of the airport or ARP where the runaway code is 3 or 4. Here the OHS is centered at DARP. The height of the OHS is 150 meter at all location of the surface. This marks the beginning of OHS which is at the end of conical surface which is marked in blue. Outer edge of OHS is at 15,000 meter and heights remains 150 meter at all parts of the surface. Now this is a distant view of OHS in a plain view. In this video, the view of the OHS can be seen in respect the flight strip. Now, let's shift our focus onto the conical surface. The conical surface can be described as a surface sloping upwards and outwards from the periphery of the inner horizontal surface. The limits of the conical surface shall comprise a lower edge coincident with the periphery of the inner horizontal surface and an upper edge located at a specified height above the inner horizontal surface. This is the top view of the conical surface. Then the flight strip. Let's have a look at the conical surface from the inner edge in a 3D view. The height of the conical surface is 45 meters, that the height of the inner horizontal surface. This edge marks the beginning of the conical surface. The slope of the conical surface is 5% above the height of IHS. 
This area in green marks the end of inner horizontal surface. Now, moving towards the outer edge from the inner edge with a slope of 5%. The height at the outer edge of conical surface reaches 150 meters above the ground level. Now, let's view the outer edge of conical surface from the far side. The height reaches 150 meters at 5% slope as already seen earlier. Inner horizontal surface A surface located in a horizontal plane above an aerodrome and its environs. The purpose of the inner horizontal surface is to protect airspace for visual circling prior to landing possibly after a descent through cloud aligned with a runway other than that in use for landing. The shape of the inner horizontal surface need not necessarily be circular. Guidance on determining the extent of the inner horizontal surface is contained in the airport services manual which states that for protection a more complex pattern could become necessary involving two or more arcs from each end of runway. Here, the IHS is plotted on a map where it can be seen that the radius is marked at 4000 meters from the runway threshold. This is the top view of the IHS. Now the flight stirb. Let's shift the view to the inner edge of the inner horizontal surface. The height of the IHS is 45 meter above ground. Let's shift our view to the outer edge of the IHS which is also 45 meter which is being shown in the 360 degree view. Approach surface. This can be described as an inclined plane or combination of planes preceding the threshold. Now, let's see the aporic surface, marked in green. This is the flight strip. Now, let's concentrate on one side of the approach area. This view of the approach area is above the ground for better appreciation. The width of approach surface at the beginning is 280 meters. The approach surface has a divergence of 15% for the entire length till 15,000 meters. This is the first section of the approach surface with a slope of 2% ending at 3,000 meter considering a runway of code 3 or 4. This marks the end of first section at 3,000 meters. At the end of first section that is at 3,000 meters from the flight strip, begins the second section for another 3,600 meters with a slope of 2.5% and divergence remain to be 15%. This marks the end of second section at 6,600 meters. Beyond the second section lies the horizontal section of approach surface with 0% slope and divergence continues to be 15% till a distance of 15,000 meters. Let's view the approach surface from the side view which from the flight strip. This denotes the first section with a slope of 2%. Here it marks the end of first section at 3,000 meters. After the end of first section, commences the second section with a slope of 2.5% for the next 3,600 meters. This marks the end of second section at 6,600 meters. Next comes the horizontal section of the approach surface. At the end of second section at 6,600 meters, Starts the horizontal section with 0% slope up to 15,000 meters. 
let's have a view of approach surface with rest of the obstacle limitation surfaces. Here, the approach surface and the inner horizontal surface is presented on the same screen, as it is visual that the inner horizontal surface is more restrictive than the approach surface, which is required to be kept in mind while approving any obstacles in the area. Next comes the conical surface with approach surface. The conical surface is more restrictive to some portions of the surface whereas rest portions have the approach surface more restrictive. Thereafter, comes the outer horizontal surface with the approach surface, where it can be clearly seen that the approach surface is most restrictive which should be kept in mind. Inner approach surface a rectangular portion of the approach surface immediately preceding the threshold. This surface defines a volume of airspace in the immediate vicinity of a precision approach runway which is known as obstacle-free zone. The zone is kept free from fixed objects, other than lightweight frangibility mounted aids to air navigation which must be near the runway to perform their function, and from transient objects such as aircraft and vehicles when the runway is being used for category 2 or 3. ILS Approaches this video shows the inner approach surface. The inner approach surface has a width of 120 meters for the full length. The inner approach surface has a length of 900 meters. A transitional surface can be described as a complex surface along the side of the strip and part of the side of the approach surface that slopes upwards and outwards to the inner horizontal surface. This video shows the transitional surface along the strip equal to the elevation of the nearest point on the center line of the runway or its extension. This video shows the transitional surface along the side of the approach surface equal to the elevation of the approach surface at that point marked in yellow. Inner transitional surface can be described as a surface similar to the transitional surface but closer to the runway. It is intended that the inner transitional surface be the controlling obstacle limitation surface for navigation aids, aircraft and other vehicles that must be near the runway and which is not to be penetrated except for frangible objects. The transitional surface is intended to remain as the controlling obstacle limitation surface for buildings, etc. The limits of an inner transitional surface shall comprise a lower edge beginning at the end of the inner approach surface and extending down the side of the inner approach and surface to the inner edge of that surface, from there along the strip parallel to the runway center line to the inner edge of the balked landing surface and from there up the side of the balked landing surface to the point where the side intersects the inner horizontal surface and an upper edge located in the plane of the inner horizontal surface.
Now, let's plot and see the inner transitional surface on a map. The width between both sides of the inner transitional surface is 120 meter and the slope outward is 33.3%. Now depicting lower limits of the inner transitional surface along the flight strip and balked landing surface. Now depicting lower limits of the inner transitional surface towards the other side of the flight strip. Now depicting the limits of an inner transitional surface shall comprise a lower edge beginning at the end of the inner approach surface and extending down the side of the inner approach surface to the inner edge of that surface, from there along the strip parallel to the runway center line to the inner edge of the balked landing surface and from there up the side of the balked landing surface to the point where the side intersects the inner horizontal surface. Now depicting the limits of an inner transitional surface shall comprise an upper edge located in the plane of the inner horizontal surface. Balked landing surface can be described as an inclined plane located at a specified distance after the threshold, extending between the inner transitional surface. On this video, the balked landing surface can be visualized over the flight strip. Let's plot the balked landing surface on the map and visualize the concept. This is the flight strip marked in yellow and balked landing surface in violet. The width of the balked landing surface at the commencement of the surface is 120 meters with a divergence of 10%. The slope of the balked landing surface is 3.33% and reaches a final height of 45 meters to merge with the inner horizontal surface. Now, let's have a look in the cross-sectional view. As already discussed the slope is 3.33% to reach a final height of 45 meter. Take-off climb surface can be described as an inclined plane or other specified surface beyond the end of a runway or clearway. Now let's visualize the take-off climb surface in different angle of viewing followed by overlapping approach and take-off surface to understand the difference and more restrictive surface. This video has the take-off surface plotted on a map for better understanding. This is the flight strip. The take-off surface is depicted in green which is depicted over the flight strip for better appreciation. The width of take-off surface is 180 meter with a divergence of 12.5%. This surface has a slope of 2% for the entire length and divergence is limited till the final width reaches 1800 meters. The takeoff surface ends at 15000 meters. Now looking at the approach surface in the cross sectional view, here the slope of 2% is shown.
This marks the final divergence to achieve 1800 meters. This marks the end of takeoff surface at 15,000 meters. In this video, the approach and takeoff surface have been superimposed to understand the most restrictive surface. Here, the takeoff surface is restrictive than approach, followed by approach surface being more restrictive than takeoff surface. Obstacle limitation surface requirements for non-instrument runways, non-precision approach runways and precision approach runaway category 1, conical surface, inner horizontal surface, approach surface in sequence first section, second section and horizontal section and similarly for the other runway. Violet area marked is transitional surface. Additional recommendation for precision approach runaway category 1. Inner approach surface, same for the other runway, balked landing surface followed by inner transitional surface, now removing all the surface for depicting the same for the other runway. Balked landing surface followed by inner transitional surface for the other runway. Obstacle limitation surface requirements, precision approach runaway category second and III, conical surface, inner horizontal surface, approach surface in sequence first section, second section and horizontal section and similarly for the other runway. Violet area marked is transitional surface. Inner approach surface, same for the other runway, balked landing surface followed by inner transitional surface, now removing all the surface for depicting the same for the other runway. Balked landing surface followed by inner transitional surface for the other runway.